took over. And look what happened to our country. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Hey guys, uh, Trump's been shot. When he got up, he was bleeding from the ear, but he seemed perfectly fine. He's not dead, he's fine. Like my best guess, and this is just a guess because he was just shot, uh, is that he uh, w was, uh, it, it looked like a BB gun or something. As well, as you saw the- He's US clip farming harder than the new crop of FaZe talent. He's like FaZe Ronaldo. He's clip farming harder than Jinxie. He keeps throwing up his fucking fist. I've been at many of these Trump rallies. And it's here's over. A of one of our colleagues there on the ground, the photojournalists who are in the front row showing the blood. On All right, guys. So we have to do one of probably many follow up stories on this bombshell story involving the failed assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump. That fortunately, fortunately, uh, did not result in serious injuries for the president. The president is alive and well. He got grazed in the ear by a bullet. This is what he says as he is now speaking out on Truth Social. He is saying that he was bloodied up, but he's good. On the events, and at 8.42 p.m. Eastern tonight, former President Trump issued a statement on Truth Social. He said, quote, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all law enforcement for their rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed. And also, and, and he said he, he said that he recounted in his view, whizzing sounds, mm -hmm. quote, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, he says, end quote, on his true social account. Yeah, so again, thank God the president is okay. Um, however, unfortunately, uh, one other rally goer was killed uh, along with the gunman. Now, there's a whole lot of speculation about how this happened because apparently uh, this sniper, the gunman, was on a rooftop about two to 300 yards away from the rally. And there is now some bombshell interviews and witness testimony out there that suggests that there was either a major mistake made by the secret service or as i initially speculated in my first reaction video there's something very 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 sinister wicked and evil going on here take a look and watch the, and listen to the rally right we couldn't see him but we could hear him so we walked up in probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, you know, but um, we noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle, absolutely. Um, we're pointing at them. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police are like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. He, you know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for you know, two, three minutes, Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. hundred percent. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three and to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police and the Secret Service? We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. 
Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, you, uh, did you see what happened to him at all? Oh, yeah, they blew his head off. Okay, sorry. Secret Service just, blew his head off. Okay, we just be careful because we don't quite know who's watching, but you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy? Absolutely, 100%. Okay. okay. Yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards, or...? They, yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead, and that was it. It was over. Yeah, so you see, now you heard that. Um, there has to be a full-scale investigation of the Secret Service, okay? Because what really scares me about this situation, guys, again, as much as I am very happy that Trump is alive, is that I'm afraid that Trump cannot truly be safe if he can't even trust those around him that are paid to protect him. Because to me, my gut feeling says inside job. Because I just find it hard to believe that a location like this, which is not hard to secure, it shouldn't be too hard to secure, they allowed a gunman on top of a rooftop with direct sight at the rally, the stage that the president was going to be on. I mean, perfectly lined up. And apparently, according to an eyewitness, law enforcement was aware that this person was climbing on the building with a firearm and nobody did anything about it. Again, I, I'm not sure if this testimony is 100% true. But I just think that it is extremely, extremely, extremely concerning that the former president of the United States was not properly protected by the Secret Service. So there needs to be a full-scale investigation. Somebody has to be fired. The director of the Secret Service has to be fired or resign, effective immediately. Because you got one job, to protect the former president and the current president. That's your job. And if you can't do that, if you can't do something as basic as to make sure Random people can't get access to a rooftop with direct line of sight at the president as he's giving a speech. Then the leadership has to go. Somebody has to lose their job. It, I mean, who knows? Somebody should be facing charges. OK. This is completely 100 percent unacceptable. And this is why I'm so concerned about this situation, because we don't know if this is going to be the last attempt on the president's life, guys. I'm pretty sure it's not. And he has to have people around him that are sworn to protect him and that are going to actually do the job properly. This was a massive security failure. Absolutely massive security failure. But again, for as sick, wicked, and evil some of these people are that are going after Trump, again, I wouldn't be surprised if... There's more going on here in regards to why this was allowed to happen. So that being said, uh, Joe Biden uh, has spoken out about this, and this is what he had to say. Thoroughly briefed by all the agencies in the federal government as to the situation, based on what we know now. I have tried to get a hold of Donald. Uh, he's with his doctors. Uh, they, apparently, he's doing well. I plan on talking to them shortly, I hope, when I get back to the uh, telephone. Look, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. And so, and I want to thank the Secret Service and all the agencies, including the state agencies, that have been engaged in making sure that the people who, and we have more detail to come relative to other injured, other people maybe injured in the audience. I don't have all that detail. We'll make that available to you. I may be able to come back a little later tonight, but we'll put out a statement if we don't, if I'm not able to get, if, we're, if it's not convenient for you all. But the bottom line is, the, the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to can be conducted peacefully without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. It's just not appropriate. And we, everybody, everybody must condemn it. Everybody. I'll keep you informed. And if I am able to speak to, the, to Donald, I'll, I'll let you know that as well. 
So far, it appears he's doing well, number one. Number two, that they're thoroughly investigating what happened to anyone else in the audience. I have, we have some reports, but not final reports. And every agency in the federal government, I'll be, and I'm going back to, to my phone to speak with the federal agencies that are being put together again to give me an updated briefing. Has anything happened? They learned any more in the last couple hours. So thank you very much, and I hope I get to speak to them tonight, and I'll get to back to you if I do, okay? I don't know enough to, I, I, have, I, have an, I have an opinion, but I don't have any facts. So I want to make sure we have all the facts before I make some com any more comments. Thank you. Are you worried about the Yeah, so that's Biden basically saying nothing, but he did speak on this issue. Um, I personally think that the left, Democrats, the liberal media, um, they have a lot of questions to answer because their rhetoric has been out of control. This is something I've been talking about for the last three or four years. You guys know on my channel, I don't think there's anybody, anybody in politics, period, that has talked about the left-wing extremism and violence in this country the way that I have. I don't think anybody has covered it as much as I have. This is why when I saw this happen, I was like, I, I'm, I am shocked, but also at the same time, not surprised. How many times have I told you guys that the biggest domestic terror threat to this country is left-wing extremism, okay? I feel like I say that almost every time I do a video about some left-wing lunatic losing his mind and committing some act of violence. This type of stuff has been condoned and accepted by the left and the media. In fact, they have been responsible for radicalizing these individuals to commit these acts of violence, right? Of course, it's Trump is a Nazi time again. Let's deal with Hitler, okay? I, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that. I mean, that is Mussolini, Hitler-like language. Trump's affinity for Hitler was always covered under an umbrella of his stupidity. Echoing Hitler's words. Listen to this. Well, Hitler was duly elected. That's right. Echoing the hateful rhetoric of Adolf Hitler. It echoes Hitler. That's the kind of language Hitler used in Mein Kampf. God, vermin and, the, and Hitler and Mussolini. That's a horrifying clip. That's a fascist clip. We're just going full on Hitler. It's from Hitler's Germany. We just need to say for the record that the term vermin was really effectively used by Adolf Hitler. Echo dictators like Hitler. With language evoking authoritarian figures like Adolf Hitler and Adolf Hitler. Donald Trump parroted the autocratic language of Adolf Hitler. Talk about the brilliance of Hitler's generals. Correct. General Kelly, yes. And what is the mainstream liberal media doing right now? What are they doing right now in response to what probably is some left-wing lunatic that tried to assassinate the president? They're talking about possible violence from the right. And they're upset that Trump's statement didn't call for people on the right to be peaceful and to tone down the rhetoric as if it is our fault that this happened. And then the biggest threat that officials are telling me tonight is in the form of retaliatory violence. Sam, Every that's you're, you're taking me to exactly what I've been underscoring and is frankly very concerning in the rhetoric we are seeing at this hour already we are seeing some republican lawmakers come out with statements directly drawing a line between the shooter whose name we do not know we do not know if he's a lone actor or with somebody else but drawing some connection to the government we have nothing to base that on at this hour. At this hour, leading officials within the U.S. government still don't know what transpired. And it is, frankly, unpatriotic at this moment to be stoking the flames when we know that we are sitting on a cauldron of tensions. We know that uh, tensions were already high before this incident, and the counterterrorism officials and Homeland Security officials that I've spoken to in the last few hours are deeply concerned that this event will be used as a rallying cry to launch attacks against individuals associated with the Biden campaign campaign and lead to broader domestic distress. So right now, the goals are to investigate the incident, both the perpetrator and the security failures, as well as to try to tamp down uh, any tensions that may arise coming out of it. Now, in this country, there is the First Amendment. And what we're seeing on Twitter, while it is First Amendment protected activity, mm -hmm. I will say again, is unpatriotic in the sense that we know that this kind of rhetoric has a nexus to violence. We saw that on January 6th. We saw that in the attack against Nancy Pelosi's husband and multiple other incidents. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable, guys. Honestly, I don't even have the energy right now 
to be as angry as I want to be with just how ridiculous that segment was, guys. I mean, just imagine. The former president just got shot in the head. And the mainstream liberal media is talking about January 6th and what happened to Nancy Pelosi's husband in response. But they're not talking about all of the violence that we've seen from the left the last three to four years that has led up to this. We had an attempted assassination on a Supreme Court justice, a conservative one, and now the former president. And you're going to sit here and try to talk to me about fucking January 6th? I don't want to hear shit about January 6th. These people make me sick. I can't stand these people. You cause a problem. You radicalize these insane lunatics to commit acts of violence against the president. And then you want to turn around and gaslight us and try to pretend that this is a result of right wing rhetoric. As if a conservative shot the president. This is a result of left wing liberal liberal extremism progressive extremism democrat party extremism that's what they should be calling it if you're going to talk about any political violence that has happened in this country leading up to this you need to be talking about the blm riots the antifa riots the roe v wade riots the pro hamas riots you need to be talking about all of the political violence that has happened in this country as a result of the left i don't want to hear shit about anything else nothing nothing at all if you're not condemning left-wing violence specifically, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear no generalizations talking about what I condemn all the violence. In the no, we condemn left-wing violence. Call it what it is. Progressive extremism. Democrat Party extremism. If you're not calling it what it is, then shut the fuck up. Don't talk about it because I don't want to hear it. It don't mean shit. It means nothing. Unless you're calling it what it is. Golly, man. So, at the very least, on some outlets, like, for example, CNN, you have conservatives like Scott Jennings calling out the media for the fact that because of their rhetoric, they do have blood on their hands. The rhetoric around him over the last few weeks that if he wins an election, our country will end, our democracy will end, it's the last election we'll ever have. These things have consequences, okay? I don't know what the motivations of this shooter are. I don't know any of the details, but I know the rhetoric around Trump has grown extreme. You mentioned some other violence. You didn't mention the Supreme Court attempted murder of a Supreme Court justice or the congressional baseball game where Steve Scalise was nearly murdered. One a conservative, the other a Republican. But we have people in this country who are dedicated to telling half the country that if Donald Trump wins an election, the country will end, the Constitution will, will go away, and so on and so forth. What I want to hear from all elected officials is this kind of hyperbolic extremism has consequences and it must end. Yes, we're all shocked, and yes, political violence has no place. Where does it come from? It's got to stop. But we're also hearing from uh, Trump very, very strong statements of condemnation of Biden, the worst president, the most dangerous president, and all of that. He's speaking very, very strongly against President Biden. Who's in the hospital? Well, we do. This is an assassination. <laughs> I, I, look, I, I agree with but you. You say calm things I, I, down. I, 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 I agree both sides should calm this, things this, down. This moment is, if, if there was, if, if we... What other wake-up call could there be for everybody in this country right now? I'm, I am I, I am mortified. At, I mean, th this will live on forever. These pictures we're seeing today will be in the history books of our children and our grandchildren. I mean, we're living through a historical moment, and we have to recognize it for what it is, and we have to change. You have to we cool have to the change. rhetoric on both sides. We have to change. Because it's really dangerous, and it foments dangerous. What, we've, what we've just seen over the past couple hours or so. And it's a really, really scary situation. You want to add a point there? No, I, I, you just said it, Wolf. Um, I, Scott, your point is so well taken that the escalation of rhetoric is something that, if you just look back in, in history, uh, it doesn't take a lot to, um, to dig and find that people take cues 
from not just leaders, but from people around them. And uh, when, when violence happens, sometimes things are uncorked. And it is important for leaders across the board, as we are seeing today, yeah. to tamp things down. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. These clowns, you can tell how uncomfortable they are. And Scott Jennings is essentially telling the truth about how the media is responsible and culpable for all of this hyperbolic rhetoric around Trump. Oh, he's Hitler. Oh, the world is going to end. He's going to lock up Rachel Maddow in some migrant camp. All of these things have contributed to left-wing extremism. I mean, if you think about every left-wing extremist rally or riot or whatever it is, right? Is all a result of Democrats in their rhetoric. Look at BLM. Evil white men police officers are killing black men in the streets indiscriminately. This is the rhetoric. Oh, it's a genocide of black men being killed by white police officers. This is what they say. Complete total exaggeration. What did that lead to? They told women that, oh, Republicans are going to throw you in jail for having an abortion. What did that lead to? Look at all the hyperbolic rhetoric around Israel and Hamas and that conflict. What has that led to? All of this comes from the left. But yeah, these people want to try to both sides. This is not a both sides issue. No, 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 no. This is just a left side issue. It's not a both sides. This is not a both sides thing. No, you're not going to both sides your way through this media. You're not going to do that. We're not going to let you do that. Because it's not a both sides problem. Okay? We don't see the right committing these types of violent acts against uh, people on the left, against Democrats. We don't see that. We shouldn't see that. That has been thoroughly condemned. That doesn't happen. But we're seeing it way too frequently from the left. The left will not only attack the president, they'll attack the Democrats. They showed you. And again, it's all because... The media and the Democrats have fanned the flames of hatred in this country and division to the point where now you have the former president being subjected to an assassination attempt. Had his head been one inch in another direction, the wrong direction, we'd be talking about the president being assassinated today, being dead. And these people want to both sides this. They should be ashamed of themselves. These people are sick. They are despicable. They are wicked. They really are. Because only a sick, twisted, wicked person can come out here and talk about both sides after the attempted assassination of a former president by somebody that is more than likely probably a left-wing, radicalized lunatic that watches Rachel Maddow and Joy Reid on a nightly basis. Wouldn't be surprised. But I also wouldn't be surprised if we never get the full story. Because they damn sure don't want you to know the full story. They don't want you to know that this individual may have been radicalized by these propagandists on television and the Democrat Party. That is the last thing they want you to know. But again, we must get the truth. We must know the truth. Um, again, I, I, I'm just shocked. Well, not really, because again, this is the games of the media. But again, these people are, are, are wicked. They really are. And, and you're seeing it right in front of our face. They can't take responsibility and accountability for their actions they always have to point the finger at the other side when again th there's no two sides to this it's no two sides it's just one side it it's the left side these people are out of control let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace